Hi, we're the Weiss family. I'm Kim. And I'm Ethan. And we are originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The kitchen is home to one of our favorite features of the entire build. Um, it was a very challenging project, but very rewarding at the same time. Our countertops, they started as a slab of black walnut and we watched YouTube videos for about a month straight before we felt comfortable enough to pour this resin river you see running between the boards. And I think it turned out pretty well. We actually have more space in this kitchen than we did in our old apartment, which is crazy. But on this side we have our stove. Um, it has been great for cooking and baking, which we love doing both of. We just made banana muffins earlier this week. Um, and then moving on, we customized our own utensil holder. And my sister, who has an art shop, um, Sara Lee Studio, customized these salt and pepper boxes and butter dish for us because we don't have a ton of room for wall art so we wanted to incorporate art in other aspects of our decor this knife rack we actually made out of extra countertop material um, and then our fridge we have magnetic spice jars it kind of declutters our pantry back here um, and gives us a lot more room in there we have a 10 cubic foot magic chef fridge um, and freezer combo obviously it's been plenty of space for us and up top we decided not to have a microwave and we're just using this area for our bulky items like our instant pot and some extra groceries um, we do plan on putting a door on this but we kind of got on the road in a bit of a rush so we haven't worked out all of the details yet but moving on to this side we have our tea shelves First of all, this was a very important part of the build for me because I love tea. And as you can see, I have quite the collection. This actually isn't all that I have, but this is what made it on display. And then we have a giant sink here. It hides almost too many dirty dishes. Um, and then our faucet here detaches so we can move it all around. And we have a separate filtered water tap for drinking water. Over here, you might notice, we're regrowing some romaine lettuce. Um, it's very new to us and we're experimenting, but it's doing good so far. So I'm excited about that. Our upper cabinets hide a lot of stuff. It's not all kitchen related. This is an electronics cabinet. Um, we have extra mug and cup storage up here. This is actually our bathroom cabinet since it's closest to the bathroom. Um, and we don't have too much storage in there, so we stole one of the kitchen cabinets. And then over here we just have extra towels and Tupperware and anything you could think of really we hide in these guys. Moving on to the bathroom. As you can see, we keep the dog's water bowl in here just because they make quite the mess when they are drinking. So we try to keep it all in the shower, however it does tend to end up on the floor. Um, we do have some hidden storage in this step right here. And then we have a self-made composting toilet, um, some hidden towel storage over here. We do have a shower curtain for when we're showering just to protect the toilet half of the bathroom. And then over here we have a Nebbia shower head. On this side of the hallway, we have a bunch of storage space. These two are devoted to kitchen storage. This is our pantry. And then back here is all closed storage. So up here is our hanging closet. And then we have plenty of drawers for additional closed storage. This wall houses our map of the United States, which is how we plan on keeping track of all the states that we have lived in. So vacations and just passing through doesn't count, but the three month period where Ethan has his work contracts counts as living in the state. So. We need to scratch off Arizona. As you can see, the only state we have so far is Pennsylvania. We lofted our bed about 40 inches so we would have room for the dog house. So the dogs have their own queen mattress down here. 
um, plenty of room for the both of them to snuggle and hang out, although they do love to come up on our bed as well. But as you can see, we have plenty of additional storage under here, and this is our water closet, so we have access to our water tank, which is under here, our accumulator, our pump, everything we would need to access is behind this door and then plenty of storage for additional stuff over here. The dogs also have their own diesel heater, which is that black vent back there, and a fan to blow the heat around. They also have an air purifier, which I guess is for us as well, but this really helps with the dust being here in the desert. Moving out of the dog house, we have a step here that we actually stole from the exterior of the bus, and it helps us get up onto our bed which is a California King, believe it or not. We have plenty of space up here, not only for the two of us, but for when the dogs wanna join us as well. As you can see, we have additional storage on either side of the headboard, which speaking of the headboard, it took us about a week to make, but it was worth every minute of stress because it really is the focal point of our bus since our layout is just one aisle. You can see it from really anywhere you are in the bus. Um, in addition to the cubbies up there, we have cubbies along both sides of the bed. And then for lighting back here, we have two different options. So we have the LED strips on top of the trim, and then we also have hidden lights behind the trim. So there is no shortage of light up here. Plus we also have this skylight, which not only lets in a bunch of light, but is also access to our rooftop deck and is one of three skylights we have here in the bus. To make it a little more homey here in the bedroom, we did add some mini pictures, um, a bunch of memories we have hanging up here in the bedroom, and our little throw pillow with the saying, home is my happy place, because we truly do believe that. So being able to travel with our home has been such a blessing. Welcome to the living room, guys. Uh, we have two couches here that pull out to a queen guest bed, and then up above here we have a Nebula smart projector that'll project onto this one here that just hooks up above here so we can watch movies or shows or whatever. Um, we also have our solar system under this and then under this side is just bulk storage and then behind that we have storage for the pedestal and the legs for our dining room table. Um, the, the solar that is under here uh, we have a 4000 watt Ames inverter we have an Epever charge controller, a series of three batteries that ends up being 600 amp hours of uh, lithium iron phosphate, and then we have our, all of our charge controllers hidden behind here. In front of that, we have a beer fridge. It's a two-way fridge, so we have it uh, run to run on propane. And then on top here, we have our Mentos slash gumball machine which also functions as our laundromat fund because we don't have a washer dryer on the bus it's just a little way of helping pay for things. Welcome to the cockpit. First things first, no drinking and driving uh, but while we're in the cockpit here um, the first big upgrade up here uh, is this air seat that we put in for you car enthusiasts out there. It is a Recaro brand. Again it was just one of our lucky finds um, I actually got it on eBay. I think we paid like 150 bucks for it. Um, other than that, up here we have a uh, one of the Chinese diesel heaters plumbed in here. We have two vents that kind of circulate back into the bus, and then we've got one here and one in the uh, footwell that both kind of act as a defroster. We've only needed it once or twice, but it seems to be working pretty well because we did remove the stock defrosters. After that, up here we have the steering wheel that we upgraded more of an appearance upgrade than anything but it does feel a little nicer while you're driving um, outside of that we have this cabinet here that holds about a hundred pounds of dog food in addition to that I put in this uh, switch panel here that controls our fans it controls our light bars uh, it's got charger outlets for whatever you need and then we also have our backup camera we kept the stock fans just painted them black uh, just to kind of go with the theme of everything else. In addition to the fans, we have this chalkboard up here which hides our mini split, which is a 12,000 BTU Pioneer 110 volt unit. Uh, we are able to run that off for our solar, 
as long as we're getting the consistent sun that we're getting right now out here in Arizona. Um, so that's been that's been a blessing. In addition to that, uh, if you look into the background, we have a Jeep Wrangler that we are planning on towing behind us on our trip out here. We ended up just driving separately because we left in a little bit of a hurry. Um, but by the time we leave here, we're planning on getting a hitch installed so we can haul that behind us uh, and all of us can kind of ride together in the bus. One more thing that's hiding up here. Behind the seat, we have a can crusher. Uh, we have kind of limited garbage and recycling space here. So having a can crusher in the bus being beer enthusiasts is kind of key. Welcome to the outside of the bus. Uh, the bus itself is a 97 Thomas International 3800. It's got the DT466E. It had an AT545 transmission, which we swapped out for an Allison 2000 series. Um, just a little bulkier um, with the five speed overdrive. Um, helps with hills, all that. It's a little bit more efficient on gas as well. On the outside here, you'll see the condenser unit for the mini split is mounted out here. Um, the 16 feet line that comes with the unit was perfect to run it out just this far. Here we've got our battery box, just pretty standard. Um, you will also notice on the outside of the bus, all of the lights have been upgraded LEDs. Again, a little brighter, a little bit more efficient. And then here we have a 10 foot long uh, toolbox that we picked up off of an electrical truck. Um, picked it up for a hundred bucks and it was just kind of a no brainer. It's a lot of extra storage for some of our bulkier items. Obviously we did a roof raise. Uh, the roof raise itself was 20 inches. So we put all new sheet metal in uh, and then we put custom RV windows in as well. Just makes it look a little sleeker and a little bit more efficient with the uh, insulation. When we bought the bus, we were lucky enough to buy a bus with pretty much brand new tires. Um, you will also see a couple of these on the outside of the bus. This one here is just a vent for our composting toilet. And then there's another one up front for the rear of the beer fridge, just for uh, circulation sake. Here we have our water inlet, and then we have a 50 amp hookup, just in case we need to stay in an RV park. But thus far, we've, we've been able to avoid that. Here is the garage area, as everyone calls it. Um, again, all LEDs back here. Um, we even put these flush mount uh, LED pods in the back for reverse lights, which helps a ton if you're back in the woods a little bit. Um, put on this lock just for a little bit of extra security. And then we've got all of this storage in here for tools and everything like that. Um, all of the power tools have custom 3D printed mounts over here so the batteries are all easy to access. And then we put in these little shelves over here just for paint and insulation and all those kinds of things that are kind of tough to store because they're round and want to roll everywhere. Um, we also have a second diesel heater mounted right here. That's the one that pumps into the dog room. Um, and then I've got toolbox, ladder, all kinds of, pretty much any tool you can ever uh, need on any project. Out here, right now, we just have this temporary table. Uh, it's been a little hard to uh, source any sort of walnut slabs that we wanna do to match out here. Um, but for the time being, this pallet holds our grill, which is on a quick connect. The hose is nice because we can pull it down to this fire pit out here that also runs on that propane. Um, and it's nice to just have that interchangeable quick connect system there. And we can also actually, the hose is long enough that we can run it up to the roof deck and have fires on the deck. Well, welcome to the roof deck. This is where we uh, enjoy a lot of our beers when it's not this windy. As you can see behind me, we have two solar panels on the deck, and then there are four more up ahead of that. Uh, they are 320 watt, 24 volt panels. We have them stepped down to, ins to 12 volt inside, uh, but they've been working very well for us. These two are sitting on our deck, which is approximately 12 foot by eight foot. Um, and it's all the composite decking material. So it's been holding up to the weather very well. We met in 2018 and bought the bus that same year. 
Uh, we took a little break in early 2019 to get married uh, <laughs> and then started the conversion process after that. We were obviously in Pittsburgh, so we were fighting the weather with winter for quite some time, trying to get the first few projects done, gutting the bus and then doing the roof raise. The bus was actually parked at your dad's house. Yeah, and he is a long-term carpenter, um, so we had a good bit of help from him, uh, mm -hmm. but we also had access to a full wood shop uh, at our house, so it was a huge help in the process of getting things done. There was a lot of projects that we kind of took for granted, and other people have questioned how we did that. Um, it's because we had access but, to all of the tools yeah. um, that his dad had in the shop. So we were very lucky to have not only his help, but his tools. Yeah. And it allowed us to do... Basically everything. Everything yeah. in the build besides the spray foam and the exterior paint job. Yeah. I think those are the only two jobs that we outsourced. Yeah, we wanted to avoid outsourcing as much as we could for money's sake, but also from a learning perspective. Um, we learned so much during the process. Yeah, and we had a lot of fun doing it, so I don't think it'll be our last build. No way. Um, but yeah, the having access to A, friends and family that'll help and have skills and teach you is huge. Um, but again, the tools were also a, a giant part of mm -hmm. how we got things done as quickly as we got them done too. Yeah. After the roof raise was done though, we were able to send the bus to get spray foam insulation, which was one of the few projects that we outsourced. Um, and once that was done, we were good to go for the inside. So once quarantine hit, um, at the beginning of COVID, we were able to get a lot of progress done on the inside. So that was all 2020. Yeah. Um, and we just hit the road in early 2021. Yeah, so COVID was a little bit of a blessing in disguise. It let us both take some time um, working less and we were, we moved out to where the bus was at. So we had more time with the bus with less traveling. So it was a lot of, a lot more work and a lot less time than it would have taken without COVID. Yeah, one of the few good things that came from that pandemic. Um, but we are currently in Arizona. So our maiden voyage was literally cross country. Um, and we're here because Ethan is a travel physical therapist and this is where he found his first position. And the desert is, I guess everything we expected really, but Pretty I just much. don't know if we were ready for it. So yeah. we're adjusting to the dryness and the dirt, but we are loving it. It's beautiful here. Um, and I am mainly a stay-at-home dog mom. I do some social media managing, but the dogs are actually a huge reason why we chose this lifestyle. Um, so we can travel and bring them with us. And with my job, the contracts are about three months at a time. So trying to find an apartment that'll allow two very yeah. large dogs <laughs> would be near impossible. So the bus was a, a perfect solution. Yep, we get to travel with our home, and so far we are loving it. <laughs> so one of the most frequently asked questions we get is how much it costs to build something like this. And it all depends on your timeline, really. It really does. So we, we had that first year, year and a half, where we didn't have a ton of time or good weather to do the projects that we wanted to do. So during that time, we were doing a ton of shopping around, finding deals on literally just about everything in the bus everything um, yeah. whether it was craigslist facebook marketplace local auction sites um there's there are deals out there to be had and um, if you're to find them yeah yeah if you're patient enough and look enough you can you can do this pretty affordably uh we have just over twenty thousand dollars into the build including the bus um and that's with a roof raise that's with all sorts of custom stuff and yeah we just took our time and found good deals. Yeah. And here's a funny story for you, actually. Since we bought the bus before we got married, we put a bunch of stuff on our wedding registry um, that we thought we wanted for the bus. Um, but obviously that was before we actually converted the bus. So it was all in our heads and our imaginations were telling us we wanted a navy blue theme. So literally everything on our registry was navy blue. Um, and we received it all, saved it, and once we actually built out the bus, 
as you can see, we changed our minds. Um, there is not an ounce of navy blue in here, and it's mostly like burnt orange and reds and like all the sunset colors. Pretty much. Blacks yeah. and whites. So, if we have any advice for buffs converters out there, it's don't get ahead of yourself. Um, and just take it step by step. It's so easy to get caught up in the excitement, and that's exactly what we did. Yeah, and again, that's where the timeline comes in. Uh, if you're in a rush to get things done, you're not going to really have time for those kind of errors. Yeah, we had uh, too much time on our yeah. hands. <laughs> and again, that, that can add to the cost of things. Yeah. Luckily, the majority of those things that we had to either resell or exchange or whatever yeah. uh, we just were not things that we purchased. Thank you guys for the gifts. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we made so much more work for ourselves. Yeah. But I think I think it turned out pretty well. It did. It was all worth it in the end. Well, thanks, guys, for checking out our tiny home. Uh, hope you enjoyed. And if you want to see more, we are on Facebook and Instagram at Just Another Schoolie. Cheers, guys.